Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a geometry node tree to get this telephone cord-like effect on any curve object. Let's jump right into it. To get going, the first thing we're going to want to do is to create the curve that we're going to use as the control for this rig. So we'll go ahead and delete everything and add a Bezier curve. We'll extrude it a couple of times just to give it some shape. There we go. Now let's jump into geometry nodes. We'll add our node tree and get going. The main idea of what we want to do is to create a secondary curve that gets wrapped around our control curve. To create that curve, we'll just use a simple curve line. The positions of the points don't really matter. The next thing we want to do is map this curve along to this curve. To do that, we're going to use a node called Sample Curve. What the Sample Curve node does is it takes an input curve. Then, based on the length along that curve, or on the factor of that curve, which is a value from 0 to 1, 0 being the start of the curve, and 1 being the end of the curve, and then at that evaluated point gives the position, tangent, and normal of that curve. So if we plug our guide curve into sample curve, this will now give us the position, tangent, and normal at the zero point. But what we want to do is to sample this curve along the entire thing. So if we take the curve spline parameter node, it has a socket called factor. For each point of our guide curve, it will give us either the factor or the length. It'll give us the factor or the length of that curve at that point. We're going to use the factor and make sure our sample curve is on factor. So when the factor is zero, it's going to give us these three pieces of information for our guide curve at the zero point and so forth and so on. Now what we want to do is we want to transfer that information over to our other curve. We'll do that using a set position node. We want to set the position of our new curve line. And so that we can see what's going on, I'm going to join this geometry with our original. So currently, here's our curve line, and here's our original line. I'm gonna plug the position of our sampled curve into the position of my set position node for my curve line. It's taken the curve line and sampled the zero position here and the one position here. However, this isn't accurate enough. So what we need is more points along our curve line. I'm gonna go ahead and use a resample curve node and plug it in here. This has gotten a lot closer to the original, and as I increase the count, it's going to get even more closer, until it's almost indistinguishable. Now that we've lined up this curve with the original, we can start twisting it. First off, let's go ahead and move this curve away from the original by a given amount. I'm going to duplicate the set position node and put it over here. If we do an X, Y, and Z, you'll see that it just moves the whole curve irregardless of the shape. That's not exactly what we want. I'm going to zero these out and we're going to change this. What we want to do is offset the new curve using the normal of the guide curve. That means that as we go along the curve, the shape of the curve is going to determine what direction the new point is moved. Now, lucky for us, this sample curve node outputs the normal. So if we plug this normal into our set position node, you'll see that it moves it away. Of course, we do have some issues with overlap here, but that's okay. And it might be a little further than we want it to be. So we'll go ahead and shrink this down a bit. To do that, we'll just use a vector math node, put it on the normal, and change the mode to scale. Then if we reduce the scale, you see we bring the curve in closer, and it maps nicely to our original. The next thing we want to do is take these points that we've moved away from our original curve and start rotating them around the guide curve. We'll use another set position node to do this, but then the question is, how do we rotate a point around another point? We can do that using the vector rotate node. So the question is, what vector do we want to rotate? Well, that vector is going to be the position of our new point. So if we add an input position node and plug that into our vector and plug our vector output into the position of our set position, 
Nothing's going to happen just yet, because our center is zero and our axis is zero and our angle is zero, so we haven't rotated anything. The next question is, what is the center point of rotation? Well, for each point along the original guide curve, that's going to be the center of our rotation, because we want the guide curve to run down the center of our coil. So if we take this position from our sampled curve and plug it into center, that's going to work. Next, we need to know what axis to rotate around. If we take the endpoint of our guide curve, which is right here, and the endpoint of our new curve, which is right here, we want this to rotate around this way, with the guide curve running down the center of our rotation. If we don't have that axis of rotation, we might rotate in the wrong way. The answer we're looking for is that along every point of our guide curve, we want to use the tangent of the curve. That's basically the direction the curve is pointing at any given point. And of course our sample curve already gives us that. So if I plug the tangent in as my vector rotation axis, I'm ready to go. Now, if I look at my curves this way and I adjust my angle, our new curve should rotate around our guide curve. Just like that. Of course, we don't want the new curve to rotate simultaneously like that. It needs to have different rotations along the curve. So what we want is the factor of our original curve to drive how much the new curve is rotating around it. If I plug the factor into the angle, you'll see that it starts even where it was and then ends only part way around. That's because this angle is notated in radians and our factor goes from zero to one. So if we go ahead and multiply our factor by a value of two times pi, which is all the way around the circle in radians, you'll see that our new curve wraps all the way around our guide curve once. Now it is getting a little harder to see what's going on. So for clarity, I'm gonna go ahead and add a curve to mesh node to our new curve so that we can see it more clearly. Of course, one rotation around the guide curve isn't gonna be enough. So to make this wrap around once, we're gonna add another multiply node. Now because 6.283, which is 2 times pi, makes it wrap around once, if we multiply this by a bigger number, say 10, we'll now get 10 rotations around our guide curve. You may also notice that our new curve is kind of jagged. That's because there aren't enough points along it. To make it smoother, we can simply adjust the resampling of our curve line. Now if I increase this amount, I'll get more rotations around my guide curve. The more rotations you put, the more segments you're going to need in your curve line in order because my my because my input geometry was going to two places, I'm going to I went ahead and added a reroute node here. That way, I can select all of these things, press control G to group, and now it'll all be inside one node and all of my connections will be correct. But now let's look at some of the things we can do. We'll drag here and that's going to be our and that's going to be our rotations. Now, if we want the resolution to stay constant no matter how many rotations we put in, we could go ahead and take the rotations, multiply it by some resolution in order to get our resample count. So if I take my rotations, and multiply it by another number, which we'll call resolution, that number will become our resample count. So if we want 10 rotations with a resolution of say three, and as we up the resolution, our number of rotations will stay the same and our quality will increase. But then if we increase the number of rotations, our quality will stay the same. The next thing we might want to adjust is how big the rotations are. Now remember, we used this scale node to change the distance between the guide curve and our rotations. So we'll go ahead and drag this, and that'll be our rotation scale. Next, we might want to control how large these circles are. We're driving those with this curved circle object. We can go ahead 
and drive the resolution and the radius of those circles from our input. We can call this wire resolution and wire radius. Of course, if I don't want to drive this with an external curve, I could go ahead and use a curve primitive, say like a quadrilateral. And I can get some interesting things going on. Of course, where you take it from here is up to you. And I'm sure you can come up with some pretty cool things to do with it. Anyhow, that's it for this one. I hope you found it interesting, and I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. Remember to check out my Gumroad page as I've got a bunch of free resources along with some paid ones that you can purchase. So until next time, I'll catch you later.